Something's cooking in Kelsey's kitchen. Come on in, come on in. And if your belly's got that itching, come on in, come on in. The main ingredient is a pinch of love. And only the best comes out of Kelsey's oven. Come on in, come on in. Welcome to Kelsey's Kitchen. I'm Kelsey Nixon and this is where we make fast, fun, and affordable meals. Have you made a New Year's resolution to eat healthier? Well, join the club. It's at the top of my list this year and I've got some great ideas for incorporating more vegetables and fruits into your diet. So let's get started with stir fry. Now stir fry is a great dish that I never think about. The thing that's good about stir fry is it incorporates vegetables. Um, if you use brown rice, it's got that nice fiber and protein with the meat. So what I'm doing is I just added um, about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of oil. Now you don't want to use olive oil because olive oil has a pretty strong flavor and it might alter the taste of your food. Not really something we're going for in a stir fry which is more of an Asian flavor. So we're going to get this going and you need to make sure it gets pretty hot. I'm using just a 10 inch skillet here. Um, if you're cooking for one, an 8 inch skillet would work or traditionally you use the big wok. So the 10 inch is going to work fine. If you don't have um, a 10 inch skillet, I would recommend investing in one because you can use it for a lot. So while that heats up, I'm going to chop some scallions here or green onions. Just get the ends off here. I like these a lot. You get the nice flavor um, of an onion and it's a little bit of an easier process. You don't really have to use a whole onion either, especially when you're cooking for just yourself or a few people. I'm going all the way up into the light green part of this onion. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to throw these into my oil here. You can hear them sizzle. That tells you the wok or the the skillet's pretty hot, which is good. And things are going to start smelling good. One thing you want to be aware of is that this oil will tend to splatter up just a bit, so don't get too close. Okay, now that that's going, I'm going to incorporate my vegetables. Here's the first tip of the day. When you're trying to eat healthier, buy vegetables once a week, bring them home, and chop them up. I have all of these great vegetables right here, and what I did is I bought them one day, came home, I washed them, and I put them in Ziploc bags in my fridge, and now I have them, and I have no excuse not to throw vegetables onto a sandwich, a salad, or in stir fry. So, let's get started with some red peppers which I really, really like, and this is celery. One other tip I want to give you is to use, think about the vegetables in the order that you're putting them in. Like if I was using carrots, I would put those in first because they take the longest to cook. Same thing with the celery. So let's use some yellow peppers, some orange, a few green, and last but not least, I'm going to put in some snow peas. And snow peas are a very traditional, Asian type of vegetable they are used for a lot of things. Turn this down just a bit. And those won't cook as long. They won't take as long to cook. So that's why I'm going to stick those in there last. Okay. And here are these. And you can get these just in your produce section. I think they were like 29 cents a pound. Extremely cheap. Okie doke. Smells good. And another good thing about stir fry is it looks great because you have all of this wonderful color going onto your plate. And like I said, your food's got to look as good as it's going to taste, especially if you're serving people. Okay, now this doesn't take long at all. I'm just going to stir these for a few more minutes. The reason it's called stir fry is because you stir over a high heat, kind of at a rapid pace. You wouldn't traditionally use tongs or anything like that but a spatula or a spoon. I don't want my vegetables to get soggy, so this is about all I'm going to cook them for. We're going to throw them back in the pan in just a minute. So I have a plate here with some paper towel on it, and I'm just going to kind of spoon my vegetables on here. I don't want to lose all that oil because we've got our meat going in next. There we go. I'll let those hang out there for just a minute. Next, we're doing the protein, the chicken. And I, if you'll notice, I'm using a different cutting board. And that's because, obviously, 
we don't want to cut raw chicken and vegetables on the same cutting board. So these are really nice little pliable cutting boards that I have and um, they're good for a lot of things. Traditionally in stir fry things are cut on a diagonal, the vegetables and the meat, but uh, we're not too picky here. I'm using about a pound of chicken and um, you can use beef, you can use pork, you can use seafood. I love making shrimp stir fry and that's also very healthy. Okay, now like I said I'm cooking up one pound of chicken but there's no way I'll eat one pound of chicken. So I'm cooking up a little bit extra to store in my fridge for a couple of days and then I can throw it in salads, um, I can do stir fry again and my chicken's already cooked. Basically just slows down the whole process. Or not slows down, speeds it up. So here we go, this is gonna go right into my skillet. Okay. Nice sizzle. Looks so good. While this meat's going in here, I'm going to season it with a little bit of salt. Kosher salt, of course. One of the biggest differences you can make in your cooking with the least amount of effort is using kosher salt rather than table salt. And a little bit of pepper, of course. And we're just gonna let this go. Now it's gonna be nice because the chicken will absorb the flavors of those scallions that I had in those, there before. So chicken is going to taste wonderful. After you let your chicken cook for a while, just till it's cooked all the way through, in this case the chicken's gonna become white, obviously, if you're cooking beef, it become brown. I am going to put about half of this in an airtight container that I'm going to store in my fridge, like I said, so I can put it in other things. So I'm going to bring this over and I'm just going to spoon it right oops, in here. Yeah, and I can have this on later on in the week. It's like I said, you know, cooking healthfully is not difficult. It just takes a little bit of planning. You do this earlier on in the week. You have no excuse to not have a nice healthy salad or stir fry. Okay, this looks good. That's a good one serving for me later on this week. And now I'm gonna throw my vegetables back in here with my chicken. And of course, the nice sauce. So, you can buy several different kind of stir fry sauces at the store, or you can even just use a simple soy sauce. So once that gets in there, that's the kick, man. That's the spice. Whoopsie. There we go. And you are on your way to a fabulous stir fry. And what will happen is the sauce, you'll give it a minute or two and it's going to reduce down and it's going to become a little bit thicker and just absolutely wonderful. And that's it. Can you believe it? A helpful dinner in a, under 10 minutes, you've got your vegetables, it looks amazing, you have your protein, and I would recommend serving it over some brown rice. Now brown rice has a lot more uh, health benefits than white rice. Much more fiber, and it's gonna keep you full longer. So once this stir fry is done, just go ahead and scoop it on top of your rice here. And you can get the instant brown rice that takes 10 minutes to cook, in fact, you can do it while you're, you're cooking your stir fry. Right alongside. And this looks phenomenal. And I've got enough for at least two people here. There we go. I'm going to turn this sucker off and I'm going to have a taste because this looks fabulous. This is all you need. A few vegetables, a little meat, a little rice. You've got an amazing dinner. You definitely want to give this a try.
You can learn English if you'll just say hello. Welcome back to Kelsey's Kitchen. We're on to our second healthy dish for this episode, and we're making a wonderful Asian salad. We're using a lot of the same ingredients as we did in the stir fry, but it's a completely different dish, and it's the same thing. We're incorporating those vegetables, the protein, and that Asian flavor gives it a little bit of spice, beats out the ordinary dinner. So let's get started. First thing I've done is I've washed my greens back here. Now in choosing greens, you have lots of options. I like to choose, this is a kind of a mixed green mixture. Um, another healthful option is spinach because spinach has a lot of iron, vitamin A, vitamin C. So these have been washed and they're dried and it's important that they've been dried as well because if not, the salad dressing won't stick to your lettuce and that is never good. So those are in there. You can do several things to dry your lettuce. You can put it in a salad spinner, or you can just dry it off with some paper towels. That's ready to go. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my chicken. Now remember, I had this chicken made earlier, and I'm using it in this salad. So I'm just going to incorporate like this. Looks good. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to get something started. I'm going to toast some slivered almonds. And how I'm gonna do that is on a medium high heat, not too high, I'm just gonna put these in here. Now you do not wanna get your pan too hot because they will burn and you'll have a mess. So we're gonna let these go kind of slowly. But what this does is it releases the oils and it gives us a nice nutty flavor and it really gives that salad a nice kick. So we'll let those go and while that's going, I am going to use some of these vegetables that I had pre-cut. So I'm going to put some of my red peppers. And you know, measurements are very subjective in salads. It depends on how many you're making for, um, whether you like red peppers or you like yellow peppers. If you like one a little bit more than the other, then obviously put more of that in. So I'm using all colors of peppers, mainly because I think the more color you add to a dish, the more appealing it looks. Um, I'm also using the snow peas, which are the traditional Asian peas to use, and a little bit of celery, and last but definitely not least, some mandarin oranges, which match so nicely with that sesame ginger dressing that we're going to put on at the end. So I'm going to put all those in there. Let's give these a whirl. I think I'm going to turn this up just a bit. But already, those oils are being released and that extra boost of flavor is coming out. Give those another second, and while I do that, I'm going to chop some cilantro. Cilantro is going to dress this salad. I absolutely love it. I use it um, as a substitution for parsley oftentimes, but it's nice to put on top of your salad, um, and it's, it's such a, just a wonderful taste. So what I've done is I've cut off the stems, and I'm just kind of balling it up. I'm just gonna run my knife through it. Another thing you want to remember in making salads is to use bite size, make everything bite sized pieces because nothing's worse than having a salad and having to fold things over on your fork because you can't fit it in your mouth. Okay, that's ready to go. And as these are toasting, I'm going to add one more thing to this, some sesame seeds. And sesame seeds will do the same thing when you toast them, it'll release those oils, and they take not very long at all. So I'm gonna let these go. And I'm actually going to do the same thing with the nuts that I'm doing with the cilantro. I'm gonna put them on top of the salad when it's all done. So next I'm going to dress this with some sesame ginger dressing. Now, there are several recipes you can do. You can make your dressing from scratch. It really doesn't take a long time, but I do have a, f a couple favorites that I really can't beat. This is a Lighthouse, it's the brand is Lighthouse, and it's only 30 calories for two tablespoons, and it's wonderful. It's a hit with me and my friends. So now I'm gonna take some salad tongs, and I'm just gonna basically dig and flip my salad. So incorporate just a little bit of that kosher salt and some pepper. This 
same thing. Dig and flip. This is probably one of my favorite salads to make. I really, I love the dressing. I highly recommend it. Okay, now as we plate this up, um, one tip I have for you is to put the plate that you'll either be serving or eating on in the fridge right before you have your salad so it's nice and chilled. Lots of times when you go to a restaurant, you'll notice that they do that as well. Okay, now that it looks like all of the leaves have a little bit of dressing and things are nicely incorporated, I'm just going to put it right into this serving plate. And this will feed probably two or three people for a main course salad, if that's all you're going to have. And you know, when you're trying to eat healthy, that's not a bad option. Okay, good. You'll want to stack it high in the center. That's usually the traditional way to do it. Looks just beautiful. And these are coming along just nicely. It smells great. So we'll throw these on top. Just like this. And we'll take a little bit of our cilantro and top this baby off. And there it is. A fabulous salad. It's extremely healthy, easy to throw together, especially when you've got those pre-cut vegetables waiting for you. Stay tuned because next we're making a berry crisp with mixed berries. It's wonderful. It's a great excuse to eat dessert any night of the week. See you in a few. Why should you watch Hello Channel? Because learning English should be inexpensive and learning English should be available to everyone. If you want a brighter future, join us and say hello. Welcome back for our last segment. Now, if you hate vegetables, but you love fruit and you're trying to incorporate those healthy things into your diet, this is a great recipe for you and it's even better because it's a dessert. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use mixed frozen berries, actually. Now, this is something you can get all year long and they're so much less inexpensive than buying fresh berries. I noticed today at the grocery store to buy um, a four ounce carton of raspberries, it was $5.99. And I got an entire bag, 16 ounces of mixed berries for only $2.50. So that's the way to go. Now, the thing you need to do to plan in advance is you need to put them on a cookie sheet with some paper towel and let them thaw. And this is kind of what it's going to look like once that happens. This is about 30 minutes of thawing, they'll look like this. And the reason that this is so essential is because when we're making a crisp like this, if you don't do this, it'll be very soupy and the texture won't be as nice. So we've done this and I'm gonna leave these for just a second and I'm gonna make the crumble that's gonna go on top. And this is so good. Add a little bit of flour, it's a half cup. Half cup of, sh or excuse me, that's four tablespoons of sugar. And this is a half cup of brown sugar and then one full cup of rolled oats. Now you don't want to use the quick cooking oats because um, you're, like I said, it's not going to create as nice of a texture. So just make sure this gets all broken up and evenly incorporated. This is a great dessert that's a little bit on the healthier side. You're incorporating the fruits there, uh, this will feed about eight people. Now the key to that is you'll notice I'm not using that big of a dish, but when trying to eat a little bit more healthy, portion control is a, is a big deal to make sure that you can still enjoy, you can still indulge in those things you love, but you're not having loads of it. Okay, and once that's incorporated, we're going to add butter. Now, it's a dessert, of course we're having butter. And I'm using one stick and it's cold and it's important that you use cold butter because if you don't it won't work basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to get nice pea sized amounts of this butter and I'm just going to use my hands to incorporate it if you don't want to use your hands you can use a pastry blender or um, two forks or a fork and a knife something like that but you really just want to work this I like using my hands sometimes I use my hands on a skillet and I burn myself I don't know why I do that but hands are the best tool 
and work this. There's a one ingredient I forgot to add to this, and that is one teaspoon of cinnamon. We need that, that's for sure. Now, the, with this crumble that's going on top, you can make more of this and keep it in your freezer for up to five days. So if you wanted to make the berry crisp for tonight and later on you wanted to take, you could even take canned blueberry pie filling and pour this over the top and stick it in the oven for about 30 minutes and it'd be great. Really quick and easy. Okay, this is just about ready. Nice little workout. Okay. Once that's done, I'm gonna just wipe my hands here. I'm gonna take these berries. Look at all the moisture that comes out of those. It's incredible. And make kind of like a little funnel. I'm just gonna pour them right into my baking dish here. To these berries, I'm going to add three tablespoons of sugar and two tablespoons of flour. Thicken them up and sweeten them up just a bit. Another good use for frozen berries is obviously berries aren't in season all year long, especially here in Utah. And so using the frozen berries, um, you get, they're a little bit sweeter, they're nicer, and they're just a good option to use. You'll want to be careful as you work these because they are relatively fragile. Okay, so nicely spread out. Now I'm simply just going to take my crumble and pour it over the top here. Make sure it gets spread evenly. This is such a great dessert. And that's it. We're going to stick this in the oven at 400 degrees and it'll cook for about 30 to 40 minutes depending on how hot your oven is. The way you'll know it's done is when it starts bubbling in the center. Want to make sure that it's not just the outsides that are bubbling but actually in the center. And let me tell you, I can't wait till that comes out. But what a day we've had here on Kelsey's Kitchen. It's a great start to a new you if you're trying to live a healthier lifestyle with the stir fry, the Asian salad, and last but not least, that mixed berry crisp. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to log on to Kelsey's Kitchen at www.kelseyskitchen.com. There you can find more fast, fun, and affordable ideas, and you can share any ideas that you have. Maybe you'd like to be a guest on the show. So thanks so much for joining, and remember that nothing says love and like something from the oven, and I'll see you next time.